I look at three people and say, God's not done with you. Just tell them real quick. Say, God's as you find your seat, tell them God ain't done with you yet. We're in the South, so you can say, God ain't done with you. He ain't done with you. If you're online and you're watching, we got people watching from Canada and everywhere. We look at it. We, we track this kind of thing. And, uh, and so I just want you to know that your reach has gone uh, beyond just this room. And, um, and how many of you, we were on our way to church this morning. And uh, yeah, we're, we're so used to saying certain things that I say we're going to church. And I started thinking, that is the dumbest thing. How do you go to yourself? If we're the church, how am I going to myself, right? So we go to worship. We are the church, okay? The idea is we didn't come here to look at each other, okay? You can do that after this is over with. We came here to worship Jesus. We came here to worship the one that knows. After my sister passed away, people would ask me, just because this is what you do, because we're nervous. We don't know what to say. And uh, how are you? And I looked at him and said, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm the pastor, and if I don't know how I am, how are you? <laughs> you bet you in good company, okay? I'm not a guru. I haven't landed yet. I don't know. I'm still up 30,000 feet in the air trying to figure this thing out with you, but I know that when I don't know and when I'm not good and when I don't have the answer, I know the one who does. And that's why we come in here, and that's why we worship. It's because I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. People ask me questions sometimes, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, but I know who does. And it's okay if you're in a season of your life where it's like, I don't know how I feel right now. And I don't know where I stand with this yet. And I don't know what it's going to happen. I don't know. It, the end of this, we always like the stories where when, where when somebody comes up and tells their testimony, they're like, I used to be this and I used to be that. But then God, and now he called me to be a missionary and a preacher. And I sold everything and I gave it all to Jesus. I've never struggled again in my life. I would listen to that testimony and be like, oh, girl, that ain't me at all. Mm-mm. No, I gave it to him. I picked it back up. I carried it around, showed it off like a trophy. I embarrassed myself. I told him I'd never do it again. Got embarrassed again because I, I woke up at 2 in the morning telling him I'll never do that again. And then I did it again. To be continued. Your story isn't over yet. Just because it's in this chapter of your life. I ain't even read a scripture, but we're preaching. Just because the chapter ain't turned yet does not mean that God doesn't know the end of your story. We came in this thing because we are the church. And the best way to be the church is to be that community on Monday through Saturday, not just on Sunday. You ain't here to hear me preach. You're here because God's got a word for you today. And not only just to hear a word, we're here because I get for Taco Tuesday, I got to have my people over and we got to talk about it. I got to talk about what's going on. You know, when LeBron hits me up and says Taco Tuesday, I need to know that I got some people in my life and it's not just on Sunday where it's like, bro, hey, make it through the week. See you next Sunday. (laughs) I could end up in jail by Wednesday. I need you throughout the week. And that's what the church is about. We need each other every single day. And you can have a calling on your life, be anointed, and be just as corrupt as you can be. Uh, uh, Secretly. (laughs) That's why we need each other. I met up with Aaron this morning, and we went and worked out. Because I need that accountability. Who wants to wake up at 6 in the morning and work out? Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody want to do that. But welcome to 3 Life Church. I'm so excited that you're here. And um, it's been a while. It's been like a month. And so... I just got a a sermon for the next six and a half hours that I believe is going to just bless your spirit. You know what I'm saying? So just just get comfortable, okay? If you don't like your chair, sit on the floor. Be all right. And... um But we're going to be in Judges chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16 over the next couple of weeks. So that's your homework. Read the chapters. And I want to talk about it, but I also want you to talk about it, okay? And all this is today, look at me, is we come to worship Jesus, but we want to create conversations, okay? I'm not telling you to come into this room and listen to all of this wisdom. I want to open up the word, and I want you to open up the word in your home with your family and your kids, and I want you to create some conversations around a dinner table. Remember in Acts, they met together and they broke some bread. You know what I'm saying? It's just good. Before you meet, you need to eat, okay? Because some of you get an attitude when you're hungry, all right? That's why you can't pay attention. Now you're thinking about going to Longhorn. It's still going to be there, all right? But at the end of this message, I want you to 
to create some conversations. I want you as the pastor and leader of your household, man and woman and boy and girl inside of this room, and as a Christian yourself to walk out and have some conversations, right? So this story, Samson is called in verse chapter 13 and verse number one, um, but before he or before he's called, this is the birth of Samson. Now we're going to read the scripture. I want to tell you kind of the story of Samson, catch you up, and then we'll talk about it through the rest of the month. If you promise to pay attention in 25 minutes and 15 seconds, I'll be done. If you promise, okay, make the promise. Say, I promise. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. Again, the Israelites, verse number one, chapter 13, it says, again, again, dadgummit, again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. Again, like he has to put again in there because he's like, I've been telling your grandparents, your parents, your grandparents, those grandparents, the great grandparents. I've been telling all of y'all. And again, you do evil in the sight of the Lord. And I want you to see that. that the, so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines to oppress them for 40 years. He said, oh, that's what you want. You can have it. Right. But I want you to know that, that God sees what you do in secret. Right. God, now, now, I want you to feel that because he says this again. They did evil in the sight, sight of the Lord. God sees what you've done in secret. And that should make you feel terrible, right? But he still loves you. <laughs> and he's so good, he'll send a Samson into your life to show you the struggle that Israel was having. And, and they used, he used a man by a man. I'm talking, he isn't a, not, like this guy is a case story all to himself. If you think we're talking about Samson to go be like Samson, no, we are all like Samson. God has placed a call on our life. There's a big purpose on our life. And he strays and runs after his flesh all the time. And he's selfish and he makes it all about himself. But he's, God sent Samson so he could get a hold of Israel. He was speaking to Israel. He said, what Samson's doing, Israel, you're doing, right? He said, but I'm so good, I'm going to send a Samson to warn you to turn back to me, that there's not going to be joy in all of that. And yes, we'll run after that, but eventually there's an awakening of our soul to go, this ain't brought the joy that I thought it would bring. This is not, I can't have sex enough. I can't get drunk enough. I can't bring joy through all of that. And Samson eventually comes back to himself, and we'll talk about that in week four but today I need you to understand that his mama was visited by an angel a lot like Jesus an angel came to Mary and said hey you're gonna you're, you're gonna birth the Christ child she had to worship and say okay I don't see it and just like this woman doesn't give her name but he says he says this he said I want you to take a Nazarite vow he is not to cut his hair drink any alcoholic beverage for all of his life he is to be consecrated set apart for my work for for my good. Now she goes to her husband and she said, you ain't going to believe the dream that I just had. An angel just came to me, told me we're going to have a baby boy. His name's going to be Samson. It means sunshine. Sonny, my mama's always called me sunshine, okay? And he was going to be a bright light in a dark world. Now I need you to see, here's the idea though. Let me find his name. Manoah, he says this. He goes, who said that to you? Bring that in. When the angel hits you up again, tell him I need to talk to him. So the angel came back and she said wait wait don't go nowhere my husband needs to talk to you so she went and got her husband brought the husband back in there and the husband said what are we supposed to do again we're having a baby give me the rules give me the regulations give me what I need to know as a dad how to lead this child and so the idea was simply this this is what he said about Samson this is he said you will become pregnant verse number five just in case you're tracking with me okay you will become pregnant and give birth to a son his hair must never be cut for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth he will begin to rescue Israel. Gosh, he's so good. God is so good that in the middle of our sin, he sent Jesus because he was going to rescue his people from the Philistines, from that pagan flesh that we want to run after all of our lives. But it says this, it says he will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. Now, this is a big point I need to make real quick is that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for every single one of your lives. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. And you know what's going to happen? Your flesh is going to wrestle against his plans okay because mine does the same but God still has a plan and and he doesn't have plan B and plan C this is his this is his plan B all things work together for good but but when I was I was a teenager and and this guy we went to this church called Victory Baptist Church in Augusta Georgia and I was standing by beside I was like y'all's age okay I was a teenager how old are you 
17. Okay, let's say I was 17, all right? So I'm 17-year-old, good-looking version of myself back in the day, okay? And uh, before I had dark circles around my eyes because I had to deal with all of y'all. Um, but... <laughs> But I was, I was, I was, we were leaving the service and this guy came up to me, me and Scott Bullard, a friend of mine, and we were standing there and he throws oil on my forehead. I said, excuse me? What, what? But I mean, I grew up in church, so it'd be weird to you, but I mean, there's been weirder stuff happening in church. You know what I'm saying? People doing backflips, running around, tripping over sawdust, all kind of stuff, shouting, screaming. You ever have that lady in church back in the day that screamed so loud, your soul jumped out of your body, came back like 10 years later? I'm talking about, I've been in church. I've seen some things. But he came up to me and I just saw just another day in church, there's oil all over my face. And this man said, God's going to call you to preach, and he's going to use you greatly. And I laughed at him. I said, yeah, right. I done seen what my dad been through. I ain't doing that. Uh-uh. And Scott Bullard, we left, and we made fun of that guy. And, um, and it was a couple of years later. But I, I remember, I, I've never seen him again. I never, I, never, I never saw this man. I've never seen him since then. But I'm, I'm beginning to think that maybe he was, he was right. Because sometimes you can read it in scripture and think, oh, that's somebody else. So when you're dumb like me, God has to send people and throw some oil on your head and say, hey, hey, dummy. And it was decades later till I saw it. It was, it was to be continued. In that moment, I didn't believe it. In that moment, I couldn't see it. In that moment, God was telling me, son, I've got a plan for your life. But I didn't. It was to be continued. It was 20 years of me raising hell before I saw it. It was later on in life. I'm telling you, you may not like where you're at. I was into things that would make the devil blush back then. But God had a plan for my life. And you may be into things and shame and guilt chases you down at three o'clock every single morning and you wake up at nine o'clock in the morning wishing that you wouldn't have. But God brought me here to tell you that your story isn't over yet. That God's got to come on somebody and give him some praise across this house because God's got a plan for your life. And your flesh is going to battle that plan. And, and, and I need you to see that Samson wasn't perfect, but God works not, not because of us. He works in spite of us. And I'm telling you, he does the most unexpected things through the most unlikely servants. And we walk into at, uh, chapter 14, verse 1. Before I go there, let me read in 13 and verse 24. When her son was born, she named him Samson, sunshine, bright light. He, he's going, he's just sunny. You just got to be around him. And the Lord blessed him as he grew. He didn't do anything to be blessed, but be born because God had a plan for him. When you were born, you were blessed because God has a plan for you and you'll never reach that blessing till you submit to his plan for your life. Now uh, it goes on to say verse 25 and the spirit of the Lord began to stir in him. You may not see it. You may pray that prayer, God save me, not feel nothing. You may, you may go a, 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 a year just and not, I, I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it. But God's got a plan for I pray that he begins to stir in you. I pray his spirit begins to stir. But there's a, it says Samson is born. And look at my face. Samson, we get to see through his story. There's a couple of things that, 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 that stood out to me is this. It, that we see that he was, Samson um, was born, right? That, so we see his birth. We see Samson's strength is going to be showcased in just a second. Then we're going to see Samson's struggle, all right? Now, you're about to get into every leader has a dark side, okay? Can we get into Samson's dark? Now, you do too, so don't be saying amen so loud, okay? Look at me. Look at me. Say, I do too. Say it out loud. Just admit that. You can be vulnerable. You're in church. You ain't going to hide nothing. God sees it. Now, watch this. On the day when Samson was in Timnah, one of the Philistine women. Now, he took a Nazarite vow and is an Israelite. He was not supposed to be messing around with the pagan Philistines, okay? But he was in a place that he shouldn't have been and he saw something and the Bible says she caught his eye. When he returned home, he said to his, his fam mother and father, a young Philistine woman in Timnah, she, ca she caught my eye and I want to marry her. Get her for me. <laughs> and so dad's like, hey, you ain't seen no Israelite women around here that you want to be with? Why do you got to go over to the pagan Philistines? Why do you got to be 
be unequally yoked. He couldn't see according to scripture that God's hand was all in this thing as an occasion against the Philistines. That God was going to use Samson to go into the camp of the Philistines and do a great work. But dad was saying, what are you doing? Because sometimes it is a to be continued story for the parents. You're sitting there going, what are you doing? Are you crazy? But you don't realize that God's got a plan for your kid and right in the middle of their crazy, God's going to turn it around and use that person to conquer some things in other people's lives. But I need to talk to the students real quick because just because they cute don't mean they ain't crazy. They, I mean, they, they could be cute, but, but they're crazy. You, you, and, and if they're crazy, you don't find that out until you test their commitment. And you're going to find out through this girl, she wasn't committed. And if they ain't committed, she may be cute, but if she ain't committed, you're going to, well, you'll find out next week. That's to be continued. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. But it was the lust of the eye, the lust of flesh, and the pride of life is how the enemy gets us every single time. He gets us through the, our eye. Why is that? The Bible says if your eye is dark, it darkens the entire body. If it comes in through your ear, if it comes in through your eye, listen to me real quick, it creates a thought. It becomes a thought only through what you see and through what you hear. That's why it says be careful what you see. Be careful what you hear. For your father up above is listening and looking down in love. Oh, be careful little ears. What you it, the, There's a, there's a there's a there's a real powerful truth behind that because what you see creates a thought what you think creates an action that's why it matters what I stare at and when I stare at God it changes my life but when I stare at my problems it also changes my life when I stare at God he becomes bigger when I stare at my problems they become bigger and what you focus on what you stare at what you give your attention to that little cell phone screen what you give your attention to is going to change your actions I'd be in a good mood and then I'll see a post that makes me mad or I'll hear this song that makes me or I'll think of something and that's how the devil steals your train of thought why is it train of thought because it's going to take you somewhere that's why God says hey think on these things whatever's good whatever's lovely what's a good report in your life and then not only that it, it'll catch your eye to steal your heart she caught his eye but she stole his heart the devil uses this this is how the devil's going to attack you maybe you need to maybe you need to understand this he uses things to catch your eye but he's wanting them to catch your eye so he can steal your heart and if you're not committed if they're not committed you know what they're going to do they're going to cheat on you every single time if they ain't committed they may be cute but they can still cheat I'm talking about they don't need to be committed to you. You know who they need to be committed to? God. Because if you ain't committed to God, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added. Then you find out that adultery and everything else sneaks in. Why? Not because I wasn't committed to you. I wasn't committed to God. As a man of God, the more I commit to him, the more I'm closer to him. And you can be called like Samson, but not close. Samson was called by God, but he wasn't close. He got away from God because he tested the strength when he got into the desert. He was headed to go see this girl and on the way to see this girl he got away from his parents and a lion attacked him let's read the scripture real quick because I want you to see this it's in chapter 14 5 through 9 let's read it real quick and I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere so just stay with me but it said as Samson and his parents were going down to Tim they going down going down he wasn't supposed to be going that direction a young lion suddenly attacked Samson near the vineyards of Timnah at that moment the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it so easily as if it were a young goat. Obviously, they're just ripping goats apart. I don't know what that means. But, um, but when Samson, but, uh, he, but he, didn't, he didn't tell his father and his mother about it. That was so strange to me. But now watch this. I'm going I'm to go some more. So stay with me. Stay with me. Look at my face. That way you stay engaged. Watch. He says, later when he returned to Timnah for the wedding, he turned off the path. Let me go check out this carcass again. And when he checked out the carcass, he found that a swarm of bees had made some honey in the carcass. Now, I've been studying this for a couple of months. Like a couple of months ago, I was looking at this thing going, what in the world? <laughs> like you rip a line apart and then now we're getting honey out of it. I'm like, how long does that take? You know what I'm saying? Like it's got the decay. You got to get all the stuff out of it. And then, and then bees have to find the carcass. 
they have to make the honey. I'm not sure. I'm not a bee. I've never made honey. I don't know how long it takes, right? I can only imagine it takes a while, okay? And I've never been dead, so I don't know how long it would take for me to decay. But I do know this. As I saw it, I was like, that's the strangest thing in the world. And the Spirit of God began to speak to me because of this reason. Remember, there's a call of God on your life. And here's the idea. Look, he grabbed this line, rips it apart. Now, he didn't tell nobody because, I, I mean, I wouldn't tell nobody either. There's some things in life that God does for you, and if you told them, they look at you like you're crazy right but I want you to see this is what's so crazy he kills the lion in this season and it feeds him in this season and what you thought was a battle was really a blessing last year's battle was really a setup for something sweet this year and you fought that lion in one season and God was getting ready to nurse you in the next and what you're looking at as a battle is not a battle it's a bowl that God is using to house the blessing that you're going to need in 2020 so don't you walk away from that lion allow God to fill you up with the spirit to fight the battle right now in this season because God's got a blessing for you next year it's the battles Jesus I'm talking about it's that fight I thought I would never make it through it's that thing he, he, the thing that almost killed me last year is feeding me this year the thing that almost killed you in this season is going to bring nourishment not just to you you but your family next season God fed him and he fed his parents. And that battle that you thought you would never make it through was just set up by God because he says, I'm working all things together. Forget that those who love me. And you're going to be able to carry something sweet to people to say, hey, I made it through this and so can you. I thought I would quit, but God gave me victory. And I, I never thought I could make it through it, but God gave me strength. And, and what I thought, that pain, I had, I had my focus on the pain. I didn't realize it was a plate. I had my focus on the problem, and I didn't realize that, that, that it was part of my purpose. And I had a focus on this, this thing, and, and, and I never knew in a thousand years that, that, that God knew what I needed in the next year of my life. I never saw it, but he didn't say a word. He didn't say some things aren't for everybody else. And you got to know the wisdom of when to keep your mouth shut. I was a kid. I was like nine years old and I was riding my bike at Sharon Baptist Church back in the day. And we had this hill that went down and there was this, you know, the prickly bush, the big tree. There was one of those. Okay. And I had a destiny with that tree and I couldn't stop. I didn't have the motor skills to get out of the way. And I'm headed straight for it. And as if time stood still, I'm freaking out. And the only thing I could say was, God! And something moved me over. I have never told that story because I knew nobody would believe me, okay? But this is a personal story of when God began to become real in my life. And I heard that we had guardian angels. That day, you may not have experienced it, but I did. And in that moment, I knew something moved me over, and it wasn't me. And in that moment, I was like, in Jesus' name, Lord, you got me. You know? <laughs> but like, I mean, but for real, I go back to that moment, and, and, and I'm headed for destruction and right at the last minute I'm talking about there's been times in my life headed towards destruction I'm talking suddenly the angels appeared I'm talking headed towards things I shouldn't have been but there had been some prayers from a mama and a daddy that stopped me from going into places that I never should have been I'm talking about God's hand of protection was on me before I ever knew it why because God has a plan for your life he knows what you're going through before you're ever going to get there. And he's already saying, hey, I know you can't, but I can. And I know you don't know, but I know. Oh, I've got some. I got some secrets for you. And as I began to walk through this and, and, and read through this scripture, I was thinking, no way. No way. No way. He didn't say a word. But some things you just got to keep to yourself. Because God knows, God knows this, a blessing, a blessing, it's going to be a blessing so big that, that uh, you, you're just going to feel stupid telling somebody, okay? But watch this. This is what the Lord told me to tell you today as the band comes their way. Is this, how do you know that God's hand is on you? How do you know that God's hand is on you? I'm going to answer it, so you're about to find out. When only he could take down what tried to kill you when only he 
could get you through that situation that you could never get through. When only standing on the other side, we love that testimony, right? But when was the last time you went to church and you heard the testimony of, man, I'm, I'm struggling uh, with my pride. Amen. <laughs> uh, still getting drunk all the time. God's good. I messed my marriage up, and that's been 10 years ago. Still hadn't, still hadn't come back together. Because we only like the success story. But what if right in the middle of me waiting on the next chapter, I decided to worship and say, hey, it hadn't happened yet. But in faith, I'm going to stir my own faith up. I'm going to stir it up myself. And I'm going to go ahead in Jesus' name and walk out what he says about me that I am more than a conqueror. And then I am a new creation. I, some days I don't feel like a new creation, but I, I'm going to go ahead and start walking like I am complete in Christ. I don't feel it because guilt and shame keeps knocking at my door, but I want to go ahead and say that, that I'm delighted in by God according to Zephaniah. I'm deeply and I'm dearly loved according to John chapter 3. And I'm going to go ahead and say, look, I don't feel like a mess. I feel like a mess, but he says I'm a masterpiece. I feel crazy, but he said I'm more than a conqueror. I feel like I'm going to struggle with this for the rest of my life, but he said he saved me. And I feel like I want to quit and I feel like I'm all messed up but he says I'm flawless and he says I'm perfect I knew I should have never got with that girl but I did and I don't know what to do with it but he but 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 there he is standing there with the honey in his hand going wow that's what you're doing with that God's got some sweet things to come your way some beautiful things to come your way what kind of lions is he trying to kill through you today? It's a lion of temptation and the, a lion of pride and just all kind of stuff that we struggle with. And the only way to get through it is the Spirit of God come upon you. Suddenly, in a worship service, I decided to put my hands in the air and strength hit my soul. Suddenly, I quit running to the same thing I've been running to, and I just got on my knees and said, okay, God, it's your turn. Suddenly, I'm going to see a victory. I don't have time to go into the rest of this. I'll, I'll, I, because I, I need you to know that, that he, he took that, turns it into a riddle, and, and, and next week we'll talk about it. But he turns it into a riddle and, and starts playing games with people he should have never been playing games with, gets with a girl he should have never been with to begin with, and gives his heart to her. And, and I'll... I'll but that'll be to be continued. But today, God sent me to talk to you and remind you this. I'm done. Two minutes. That just like Samson, God has a plan for you. And just like Samson, struggles will be there. Temptations won't leave. But God will give you strength. And he came to tell, he, God said, Josh, go back over there and remind somebody, okay, that it's not over. That his mercy will cover your mistakes. That he's going he's gonna to take what, what happened to you back then, he's going to turn it for good. That battle was really a blessing. The season right now is really a blessing. It's not over with. If we can tell you anything, just come back. Keep showing up. Keep struggling through it. Don't you quit. Something sweet is coming out of every single attack. Because the Bible says to taste and see that the Lord is good. And that lion represented something really special. You see, the Bible says that the devil is as a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. He's like one. He's like a little chihuahua with a loud bark, annoying little bark all the time. But the Bible also says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
and what tried to take you out, he's going to attack it in such a way that when God gets done with it, he'll deliver something sweet out of it. And he said, it's the goodness of the Lord so far. The lion of the tribe of Judah has never left you in your struggle. And it's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of the Lord that saved your soul. And what God was telling me is, hey, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, go tell my kids they're going to see a victory. Why? Because I'm going to come upon you. I'm going to stir in your life that your best days are right now. That battle is really a blessing. It was just a bowl to store the sweet, good story of the gospel that God loves you right now. Not tomorrow. Not two weeks from now. Not next year. Not next month. He loves you right now. Samson, get up off your feet. Get on your feet and give him praise that God never left you in your struggle. You're going to see a victory. Why? Because Jesus died for all of our sins. And he said, hey, remind them, I've got a plan for you. Tell three people, God's got a plan for you. I mean, since we're up, like Samson, if you're in here and you're struggling, like Samson, if you're in here and you mess it up, I need you to sing over your soul today. I'm going to sing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see a victory. I, I'm just going to go ahead and sing it over my life, and we're going to take about five minutes and just give God praise for a second. Don't think of anything else as the band sings. Just give your soul a chance. Give your soul a chance. Say, God, come on in. God, come on in my situation. Come on in my household. Come on in my life. God, come on in my actions. God, come on in. Lord, give me victory, Jesus. In your name, come on, somebody. Don't you wait on your neighbor to sing. Close your eyes and begin to just sing to him. I'm going to see a victory. Those who are doing business, stay still. You can keep praying. Don't, don't. We got, we got some time. But if you're in this room and um, you're at a place in your life where you're saying, I'm tired of the... The, the doubt and shame and the guilt and I've lived with this for long enough Jesus said while we were still sinners Christ died for us yeah. somebody give him praise yeah. Yeah. and in the greatest act of worship and faith that you have ever displayed the Bible says this, that I send my spirit to draw men to me. So what you're feeling is the spirit of God is drawing you. Now you have a decision to surrender or reject it. But in his great love, he's saying this, I know everything there is to know about you. I know you better than you know yourself. I know your thoughts before you think them. And I'm madly in love with you. And there's nothing that you can do that can separate my love from you. You know, according to the Bible, there's a lot of bad teaching about suicide. People say that that separates you. It does not. The only unpardonable sin is rejecting God. So if you, I don't know what, who I needed to tell that to, but maybe you've had somebody in your family commit suicide. If they were covered by the blood, they're not uncovered right now. They're with Jesus, okay? But um, in this moment, you say, I came in here and I, I don't know either. And I'm not okay either. But I feel like God does have a plan for my life. He does. And it starts with salvation. He says, for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, in a moment of privacy and concentration from your soul to heaven, I want you to... Just talk to your father that's been drawing you in. And if you don't know what to pray, that's the reason why I'm going to give you something to pray, okay? It's just you, collect, you you're collecting your thoughts and saying, okay, God, from my soul to yours. He said, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ did raise from the dead, he said, you will be saved. So from this moment forward, you're going to step into his plan. How many of you say, that's God's calling me right now? Just raise your hand. You say, that's me. That's me. Say, that's me. Okay. I see that. Okay. All right. 
All right. I want you to do me a favor. I want the whole church to pray this prayer with you. Okay. You're praying it to God. We're going to say it with you just so you're not uncomfortable. Okay. But I want you to say this, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying for my sin. And God, I'm asking you to come into my life and save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. Hey guys, Pastor Josh here. I pray that this message has encouraged you and that you would share this word with someone else. Thank you so much for checking it out. Yes, and be sure to follow along with us on social media throughout your week. Also, if you would like to give to this ministry and that has touched your heart in any way, you can do so at threelifechurch.com and click on the Give tab. We'll see you soon.